Good morning, Calvary Baptist Church. It's good to have you here in worship this morning. Just a few announcements before we head into our worship service. Tomorrow morning, our students are heading out to Hardin-Simmons University in Abilene for Super Summer Leadership School. Please lift them up all week in prayer. Also coming up, our GA girls are leaving Tuesday morning early to go to GA camp and Florida at Plain Baptist Assembly. A lot of good girls going to be down and having a fun time, so please pray for them as well. Coming up on June 15th is our monthly business meeting. We'd love for you to come at 6.30 to listen to see what's going on at Calvary Baptist Church. Hey dads, June 19th, it's all about you. It's Father's Day. It's all about you all day, dads. And besides, there's going to be a Father's Day dessert sale going on after the worship services. Go out there and get you one of those special pies or cakes. There might be one with a little gun pounder, man. It'll knock your socks off on that one. Go along with Father's Day. All activities and the evening service will be canceled on the 19th. So, dads, you can stretch out in that recliner a little while longer. God bless you, dads. All right, folks, that's all of our announcements. Now, if you'll open up your Bibles to Leviticus chapter 3, we'll be talking about our seven-point sermon on dispensationism. Here we go. Comedian pastor. Good morning. Welcome, Calvary Baptist. If you would, go ahead and stand and meet and greet one another. We believe in the Father. We believe in the Son. We believe in the Spirit, we believe they are one, we believe in the virgin birth, we believe in the empty tomb, we believe that you conquered death, we believe that you're perfect. Well, good morning. Have a seat. I'm just going to enjoy me a piece of cake while I'm up here. Oh. <laughs> if you weren't blessed by being in Sunday school this morning, some classes had chocolate cake, and they grew exponentially. So, uh, hey, good to have you here. I know it's summertime, but thanks for taking time out to be here. I just want to touch on a couple of things. At our Welcome Center, there's a women's ministry sign-up sheet for August uh, Women's Conference here at Calvary, and then they're also going to be going to a conference in November. So ladies, go out there and sign up. Also in my hand is an evaluation sheet from VBS. In case you didn't know, there's only 362 more days till VBS 2017. So we need you to sign up or, or fill out the evaluation sheet if you served for VBS this past week. It was amazing, and we need to hear what you thought of it. So they're out there at the Welcome Center. Lots going on. You can check our website. You can just ask anybody who's part of the church. Read the bulletin. You can do that yourself. But I'm just wondering, is anybody just a little tired this morning? Not anymore. Okay. Well, one of the ways we fuel up, and that's through prayer. I don't know if you heard that storm last night, but some people's lives are in a stormy situation. But thankfully, we have a God that calms the storms. And so he calms the storms when we come to him in prayer. We invite you to pray in a number of ways here. You can come to the altar. You can join Kim and I. Uh, we'd love for you to join us and pray with us down here. You can sit right where you're at, and that's great, but make sure you reach out to somebody and let them know that they are part of the family of God. So let's go before the Lord right now in prayer.
with our service this morning and just pray that it would truly be a time of worshiping you. These things we ask in your name. Amen. If I could get the children to come down to the front. I think Kimmy has a message. Kimmy? Kim. Kim. Oh, it's not you today. Kimmy. Kim. You're welcome to stand or sit, do whatever you need to do to worship the Lord this morning. Even though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, your perfect love is casting down fear. Even when I'm caught in the middle of the storms of this time, I won't turn back, I know you are me. I will build a Oh, my God is with me. And if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh, no, you never let go through the coming, through the storm. Oh, no, you never let go every Every no, no, you never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. And I can see the light that is coming for the heart that holds me. Glorious thy beyond all compare. There will be an end to the struggles, but until that day comes, we'll live to know you're here on this earth. And I will feel the weak, for my God is with me. And if my God is with me, whom then shall I fear? Whom then shall I fear? Oh, no, never let go through the calm and through the storms. Oh, no, never let go. Every high and every low, oh no, never let go, Lord, you never let go of me. Yes, I can see the light that is coming for the heart that holds on. There will be an end to these troubles, but until this day comes, still I will praise you, still I will praise you. never let go through the coming through the storm oh no you never let go every high and every low oh no you never let go 
Lord, you never let go of me. Isn't it great that our God never lets us go? Jesus, you endured my pain. Savior, you bore all my shame. All because of your love. Maker of the universe. Broken for the sins of the earth. All because of your love. Oh, because of your love, because of your cross, my debt is paid. Because of your blood, my sins are washed away. Now, all of my life, I freely give. Because of your
that you overcame for us, Lord, that your blood was spilled out for us on that cross, Lord. We're thankful, Father, that we can uh, walk in your light each and every day, Lord, that you give us the strength and the faith to do that, Lord. And, uh, Father, I just pray now that you would fill this place with your spirit, that you would uh, lay your hand upon this pastor as he delivers the message. Father, open our eyes to something unseen today, Lord. Again, we lift up each one of our youth and each one of our campers that are fixing to go away. We pray that your spirit would move upon them while they're gone, Lord. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Ooh, that was just like the first service, real quiet after that video. Because we're going to let that kind of be our, our launching point to this recharging series. Because I've watched it probably more than anybody in this room, and I still trying to figure out some of the things in there that's so true. The one that gets me today is, why do you come to the service but don't go out and serve? You know, on that thought, I want to welcome you this morning. Welcome our live stream family that's clicked in and, and part of our extended family as well. It's difficult at best when you're drained. So what do I mean by drained? Anybody tired? Raise your VBS hand if you're tired. And it's been a long week. But in order to recharge, you want to get that, just go ahead, eight hours of uninterrupted sleep. Just eight hours. Now, if you're at least in your teens, it's 12 or 13. But for us adults, eight hours of uninterrupted sleep doesn't happen very often. We want to recharge, and that's where we're at, recharge. And you look at that picture, almost there, almost plugged in, and that's where some of us are today. We think about VBS last week, and, and you know, we get home, and Kim and I are like, oh my gosh. Man, it's 9 o'clock at night, and I, I'm going to do laundry tomorrow, and I'm, I'm hungry. I'll get you some crackers, you know, so crackers for dinner, and next thing we hit it the next day and get after because it's so worth it. It's so worth it to plug into these kids' lives and show them what it means, not just say, but show. Show them what it means to be a Christian, to, to be charged up and on fire. And that's where I'm at today. And if you've ever been to a modern airport recently, they've got a new place inside the airport, just about every one of them, called a charging station. That's for those people that are so busy, so on the go, they don't have time to charge up their electrical apparatus at home. And you see laptops and iPhones plugged into all these things because... Oh, the conniption fit that's thrown should a cell phone go down. Anybody here want to own up that they, their cell phone died and you had withdrawals? You, you like couldn't function. Because truly, Tony, go ahead. Thank you. Truly, these have become an appendage part of our life, haven't they? And, and should it go away, we don't know what to do. Having a little glitch at home with my television. A little glitch. And so I did the unthinkable. I just shut it off. And the minute I hit the off button, my hand started shaking on the remote. Like, like I guess I'm going to have to talk to Kim now. I don't know what else to do. I've become addicted to the, the electronic things. And so many times in our lives, and I know this is going to scare some of you when I pick it up because this doesn't happen very often, but a power tool in my hand is not a good thing. It's, but if you put the power to the tool, that's when it becomes truly dangerous. But you know, for me to be like this, you're like, oh, he, it's okay, invite him over to the house. But... Give me the power, I could tear something up really quick. Well, that's where many of us are today. We're just like this. We think we've got it, but pull the trigger on us, we don't do anything. Because we're like this. The power source is so close to us, yet not in us. But once that power source comes in us, it's amazing what happens. We have unlimited power, and that's what I'm talking about today. The unlimited power through Christ Jesus. And, and in many of us, when we go to sleep, that's a recharge. Not in here, of course. That's just lazy. But many of us go to recharge at night. We've had a long day. We want to fuel back up. When we eat, we're fueling this mechanism called the human body. <clears throat> that's what happened in the first service. <clears throat> and we're trying to get more energy in our body. And that's where we're at. In order to recharge, we've got to come connected to Christ. I said it last week. This is going to be my theme. If you don't live it, then you never really believed it. I want that to soak in really, really deep. If you don't live it, you never really believed it. And I, and I truly think that if you came here to get recharged, then you're going to have to go and discharge why you got recharged. I hope that made sense. There's no sense in being charged up in here and going out and doing nothing. Because let me tell you, the only reason this thing works right now is because last night I put it on the charger. 
because it was flat dead. It's just hanging out in the garage. I thought, man, in order for this thing to work, it's got to have some power in it, so I better put it to the power. And now it's powered up. It's ready to go. But if I don't connect it once again, it's going to discharge slowly and be dead. I think that's what happens to a lot of churches. A lot of churches that aren't having all the glitz and the glamour and, and the zip lines with kids coming down and jumping into the baptistry and smoke and mirrors and rollerball and all this stuff because it's not entertaining enough. Well, nowhere in the Bible of, the, of, of Jesus Christ said that church is to be entertaining. It's to be uplifting. It's to be encouraging. That's what we are, but not entertaining. If you have your Bible with you this morning, I'm in mean, Ephesians chapter 3 is where I'm going to go to. I'm going to break it down in just a, a little bit uh, of one verse and then, okay, I don't have the power, young man. I got no power. Justin, I got no power. I still got no, there we go. Oh, could you back it up to seven? We'll get there. Just, just, there we go, there we go, thank you. And this is where at Ephesians chapter three, verse seven, Paul talking to the, to the church, the people of Ephesus, and he's really wanting to get his point across, and he's pretty clear about it, by God's grace and mighty power. I have been given the privilege of serving him by spreading the good news. He was letting you know he, is, he has been recharged. He has been filled up. And now with all that power, he's going to go and do something. He's going to go and share the good news. Folks, I tell you, I think that's what's happening to the church. We think it's a secret society here, and it's not. Because when we come out of church, we're no different than the world. And that's not what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be changers and movers and shakers in this world. Paul's saying this, by God's grace and mighty power. Not minimal power, not mousy power, but mighty power. I've been given the privilege of serving him by spreading the good news. That's being charged and going and discharging. Going and discharging that power. That's where we're at. We, it's no good just to store it. A lot of times you guys realize if you don't crank that thing up, that battery won't charge back up and it will die. Sometimes it happens here. There will be a microphone and be going for a minute and then dead. Had just a little bit of power left and it's gone. If we don't connect to Christ on a daily basis, we're going to discharge so much that we're going to be dead. We have to recharge. Does anybody like to eat? Just be honest. Anybody like to eat? I stuck that piece of chocolate cake here, and it's calling my name right now, but I know it's rude to eat in front of y'all, so I won't. I'm lucky. And some of you like, I mean, man, that barbecue smell coming from Coleman Park. Anybody smell that this weekend? Man, I'm a carnivore. That's just who I am. I didn't get like this by eating veggies. But man, I love to eat. And sometimes when I eat, I'm ready to go. I'm charged up. I'm, I'm ready to discharge all this energy God has given me. I keep on telling the cafeteria ladies that uh, for VBS, we need to give those kids Mountain Dew and Twinkies every day. To charge them up and get them going. But they go with nutritious and fortifying and all that good stuff. Anyways, we, we get charged up for a reason. And Paul's trying to tell you this. I've been given a gift of grace through the, through the power you have the power within you. I'm wondering what you're doing with that power. Are you discharging it in the name of Jesus Christ and going and spreading the good news? Now, even with the rain last night, I even worked this in there, there's been some grumbling. Oh, my gosh. Did you see all that? Oh, my gosh, all that rain that came down. Man, I was complaining because somebody tracked mud into the church. Well, gosh, that mud can be vacuumed up. Thank God that there's mud in the church. And yes, I was out there and that rain floated all my mulch that I had landscaped around the house. You know, I swept it all back up in there. But we're a confused lot of people. We pray for rain, get it, and complain about it. What's up with that? But that's who we are. Okay, God, would you fill your church? Okay, God, would you, would you bring somebody to the glorious salvation of you? And, you? and it happens like, oh, man, church went late. Well, how come? Well, somebody went and gave their life to the Lord, and everybody had to walk. Man, we're kind of a confused lot of people. 
We want it, we get it, and we complain about it. But Paul goes on here, the same chapter, chapter 3, a little bit further down, starting at verse 14. When I, when I think of all this, Paul still says, when I think of all this, I fall to my knees and I pray to the Father, the creator of everything on heaven and, in heaven and on earth. I pray that from His glorious, unlimited resources, He will empower you with the inner strength through His Spirit. I want to pause right there. I pray that He will empower you. He will connect with you. He will infuse that Holy Spirit with you with the inner strength of His Spirit. Paul's trying to say, I want you guys to be overflowing with the Spirit like I am. I want you to be charged up, fully charged, 100% green battery. Because I've let my phone get to the yellow. You ever been there? And then it gets to the red. And then a signal comes up or a word that says, what does is, what is yours say? Mine's a droid. Mine gets down to the red. It says, plug phone in. It reminds me, you got, you got to plug the phone in. I can't sit it next to, I can't put it on top of, I got to connect it, plug into the power source. I mean, it's great that you come and sit, but it's more that you need to go and serve. That's what the kingdom of God is all about. It's great that you come in here. But what are you doing when you leave those doors? We've got a reminder. You're now entering the mission field. And it's right outside these doors. And Paul's trying to tell everybody right here, and I am praying his unlimited resources will empower you through the strength of his spirit. He goes on to say, Then Christ will make his home in your hearts. As you trust in him, your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And you may have, excuse me, and you may have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. I don't know about you, but the worst feeling, the worst fear, is when you jump into that vehicle and you hear the dreaded... Rrr, rrr, grrr. Had a little journey with that a little while ago. And that's what happened. It's the... Rrr, well, that car sure is dragging. I don't understand... Rrr. And go to the mechanic, and like, yep, yep, your battery's almost dead. It's giving you a warning. How many times have you ever got that warning in life? You, you know something's about to go wrong. You're like, man, what's that? Well, you know, it sounds like if you go another step, don't go. And you step right off into it. It's like, oh, my gosh. I've been putting air in that tire for three weeks now, and it was flat this morning. It's been telling you for three weeks to get it fixed. And all of a sudden, it's completely flat. That car's been, oh, it's been going on for about 10 or 12 days now. But I just thought it was just kind of weak. And I thought if I drove, it, you know, the things that we try to make people understand, we do. And we know it's wrong. The power source is Jesus Christ, period. Getting next to him is okay, but it's not good enough. Plugging into him is what he wants. He wants that connection within our soul. He wants to come into us. That's when we say, Jesus, I want you to come into my life. I want you to come into my life. That's when we connect with him. That's when Paul's saying, I want you to have the fullness of life and the power that comes from God. Paul knew that his father had unlimited resources. Chuck would be out of a job if our vehicles never broke down, if they had unlimited proper running machines. But they don't. They break down, and in the breaking down process, we get the hint that something's going wrong, whether it's a wiggle, a wobble, a sound, a click, a pop, and they're warning signs. Because Chuck's here, and I know a lot of times he asks, well, how long has this been going on? And I bet you seldom do they say, well, it just happened this morning. Most of the time, well, that light's been on for about three weeks, but if I thought it was really bad, I, I thought it would get bright, or I thought it would flash like a strobe light or something. The warning signs when we're getting run down is this, we're tired. Let me go back to your stomach. There's a difference between hungry and hangry. 
I know, y'all, when you get hungry, it's like, I can just get me a little snack and go on. But when you are hangry, that's a word. You are so hungry, you become angry. You're hangry. And you start going like a cannibal. You'll start eating anything like broccoli and cheese casserole or whatever else. Because you're, no, nah, you wouldn't get that bad. But you want to you feed the machine. The same with your spirit. When things are going wrong, when everything seems to be a sandstorm, when it should be a grain of sand, thinking, what is going on? I need to plug in. And here it is, folks. Bottom line. Unlimited resources of power right here at our fingertips. Unlimited. You're having a bad day, it tells you how to get through the day. You're having financial troubles, it tells you how to fix those financial troubles. If you're having relationship problems, it tells you how to have a better relationship. You're lost, it tells you how to be found. It's got the answers for every question that you have. Paul plugged into, he plugged into the unlimited resources. And I know it's going to sound cornier than a corn dog because we ate a lot of those Friday night. But you can stand in your garage every single night for all night long, but you'll never become a car. You can carry this around all you want, but unless you believe in it and live it, you'll never be saved. You can have 10 of them stacked up somewhere. You can have stickers on your vehicle, rings on your fingers, jewelry around your neck. But unless you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and plug into that power, you will never be saved. And I know a lot of times we're thinking, but I went to church, and I sat by, and she was, she'd been a Christian forever, so I'm sure some of that rubbed on me. Or, or my dad was a deacon, or my dad was a pastor, so surely I'm saved. No. You got next to the power source. It's just like this. It's all well and good that I sit it next to it, but it will never work, ever, until I'm connected into it. Until I plug into the power source. But Steve, it's been hard. I didn't say it was going to be easy. But Steve, it's been kind of bumpy. Jesus said, I'll be with you. Though I'm walking through that valley, I'm going to walk with you. He didn't say you wouldn't walk through the valley. He said, man, in this world you will have trouble. But I've overcome that. He didn't say you wouldn't have trouble. He just said, you walk with me and you'll overcome the trouble as well. You can sit in the church year after year after year. You can move from pew to pew to pew. But unless you plug in to the power source of Jesus Christ, he will never be your savior. You will know him, but you'll never have a relationship with him. But what happens when you connect? In John chapter 15, verse 5, it says a very descriptive picture. We've got a whole lot of vineyards around here, so I think it's kind of appropriate. Jesus said, I'm the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me, and that's a huge statement, if... It's a choice. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit apart from me. You can do nothing. And that's a connect and a disconnect scripture right there. He said, if you connect with me, if you're the branch and I'm the vine, you can have all you want, all the power you want. I have unlimited resources. You can have them all. But apart from me, you can do nothing. Nothing means nothing. Connected to Christ, plugged into Christ, the, internal, the eternal power source, that's where we want to be. Am I saying because you're connected to Him that life is smooth and, and flat? No. It's bumpy and it's rocky and it's tough. But you'll never be without the power source that says, I'm going to get you through this. He might even say, I've got this. Just let go. I'll show you how to get through this. But apart from me, you can do nothing. What Jesus is trying to say is, if you disconnect from me, sooner or later you will be dead. Period. If you disconnect from me. If you unplug from me, you will be drained, sucked dry, dead. And that's what's going to happen to a lot of Christians. We get further and further and further away and our life just comes and fills in when we step away from Christ. Is anybody not busy Anybody not busy? And it's just only going to get busier and busier and busier. But this is where we stop. This is that holy day, that Sunday where God said, On the seventh day, I rested. I took a break. And I know with all the rain, the farmers said, hey, man, i got to get out there. And I completely understand that. Absolutely. 
But there is a time in your life and you know that when you can pause and say, hey family, let's circle the wagons. Let's get a couple of corn dogs and some, some soda and let's sit down. Let's link up and thank God for the blessings that we have. What's happened to family dinner? I bring that up a lot. Family dinner. Does anybody remember what family dinner was? Anybody have a roast in the crock pot right now with potatoes and carrots on it and maybe an apple pie in the window? Just Oh, a ham, a turkey, some chicken. Yeah, what's happened to the... We're, we're busy. We're just going to run out and grab something to eat. Then we're going to come home and we've got laundry and we got this and we got that. God didn't intend that, but that's what we made it. Because if we plug into Him, understand this. You'll never be able to get done in seven days, but he's empowered you to get done in six days when you unplug from him. Some wise man said, work on Sunday, break down on Monday. And that's the truth. I called him on Monday and it happened. And it's a great story. And one day in his book, he'll tell you about it. But think about this. I think one of the reasons we have unplugged and disconnected from God is a three-letter word, sin. Well, I, I've done, man, I, I've done something so bad. Understand what that means. Everything you've done is there on that cross. Nothing so bad. Even the shooting in Orlando, Florida. So we're going to shake our head and hear horrible things about 50 people shot to death in America. 50 people injured and, and all the horror stories. That are, it's an evil world out there, church. That doesn't mean we go and hide. We've got an unlimited power source that says, I can take care of this if you'll connect with me. If you'll recharge and bring me into your life, I will give you the ability and the desire to go and do. That's what we need is that desire to go and do. To reconnect with Him. To say, man, Sunday is going to be the day that I'm going to bow my head, bend my knees and say, thank you, Lord. I've been busy. Too busy. But thank you, Lord, for the blessings you've given me. Even in the storm. Did you hear it last night? Because if you slept through that storm, man, you're a good sleeper. Did anybody not hear the storm? Anybody sleep through it? It was crazy wicked. Man, the lightning and that thunder and all of a sudden that rain came from everywhere. But you know what? I was safe inside the house. I was protected. My ultimate power source, Jesus Christ, had me protected. I wasn't out in it. I wasn't worried about being washed off the road. And so many times in that storm in your life right now, you might be thinking, man, if one more storm comes up, I won't be able to handle it. Are you connected? Have you completely connected to the power source? Because if you have, understand the scripture in Psalms 112. Psalms 112, the, the psalmist writes some amazing words here about what happens to you when you can connect. And it's this. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They, get this, they will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. They have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are secure. And they will have no fear. In the end... They will look in triumph over their foes. No fear. Oh, there's a lot of people wearing those shirts. No fear, no fear, no fear. A lot of times, all it barely takes is a clap of thunder to scare us. There's a 2 a.m. phone call to scare us. There's the doctor visits that scare us. But Jesus Christ is saying, in me, connected, the ultimate power source, no fear. I've got this. I've been talking a lot this morning about being plugged in, connected. But my greatest fear, church, is this. Is that we're going to come close, but not get it. Not connect to Christ. Because a lot of times people think, well, well I won't be able to, my life's going to be boring. Let me tell you, the best life I've lived has been ever since. I said, Jesus, I want you in my heart. I didn't wake up. I didn't study to be a pastor. It wasn't on my plate. It was God's plan, not mine. And yet I'm here and my, my life has been everything else except boring. And I'm wondering where you're at. Are you plugged into the ultimate power source? Because it's all well and good that you have the tools. But unless they're plugged in, 
You, you can have them. You can have Bible after Bible, translation after translation, but unless it's open and read, you'll never be plugged in. There are many who profess they're believers in Jesus Christ. And as that video said, do you come just to sit or are you going to go serve? That's where it's at. That's when your actions meet your words. If you never live it, then you never really believed it. And that's where we're at this morning. Just because we come here, that's a good thing. It makes us feel good, doesn't it? I went to church. And hey, I went to church. Great. What are you doing now that you are the church? Jeff's got it on his church. Don't just, on a shirt, don't just go to church. Be. Be the living church that Christ created you to be. Be plugged into Jesus. And so the challenge this morning is this. If you find yourself drained, if you've almost come to Christ, but sat right next to that almost and kind of grabbed onto that pew and kind of rocked back and forth and go, oh, invitation, hurry up and be over. Then understand this, one day, this physical structure is going to end and that spirit's going to be in the presence of the Almighty. And almost won't get you to heaven. But connecting will. Plugging in will. We had an amazing VBS this week. And, and the gospel was presented through teachers, through songs. I got to go and talk to some amazing kids about what it means to be connected, accepting Jesus. And for sure I know this, that one kid did. For sure I know that. And the joy and rejoicing, because I hear about the tired bodies, and that's great. But understand this, have hope, VBS workers. 362 days from now, we get to do it all over again. And folks, let me tell you, we're going to do it 362 days from now. We're not going to be one of those like, ah, I, just, I just don't see the need in it. I just, man, unless seven kids come to know the Lord, I just don't. God wrote that name down in his book of eternal life forever and ever. And that's why we have VBS is to glorify God. And we're going to do it again and again and again. We're not going to be almost connected to Christ. We are going to be plugged in. And so my challenge to you this morning is, are you going to be connected, charging, and go discharge? Or are you going to be disconnected and dead? Would you stand with me, please? Father, I know it's a tough time in, in recharge, and it's a tough series that we're talking about right now, but we need it. Many of us are tired. Right now, this moment, we're tired. And we physically need some rest. But God, your word says, come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. So Father, this morning, I pray for those who are here, that maybe their physical body's tired. Maybe, maybe one word or one phrase I said, if, if you never live it, you never really believed it, it's just penetrating into our souls because we can come to church all we want, but coming to church doesn't get us to heaven. Plugging into you and asking you into our lives does. So, Father, I'm not going to be in the way of anybody that wants to come to you. But if they want to come to me for a prayer or, or anything else I could possibly help them with, then I'm here at the side. Father, the aisles are wide open. The altar is cleaned out. And so, Father, I, I pray for your power to come in your people this morning. That they would feel your holiness infuse their bodies and charge them to overflowing. Maybe they just need to drop that baggage and that burden they brought in here and pick up your blessings. I pray for that person who needs to do that. So, Father, it's all about you in these next few moments. Speak to us, Father. Let us charge into your life and you into ours. Connect to us, Father. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
I hope those words you're singing aren't just from your lips. I hope they're from your heart. I hope you want to find Him with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Because He has a plan and a purpose for you. And it's not just to come plop in the pew. It's to go out those doors to a mission field and charge somebody up with the power that you have. One more verse. The ushers are going to come and we're going to move on. So you open your heart to Jesus right now. this morning give you the praise we ask that you send us out into the world and uh, that we may connect with you not just today lord but but uh during the week and that you may give us the power to to spread your word lord as we should we ask that you be with those that are out on vacation that you may bring them home safely lord and be in your house once again we thank you for the wonderful rain and ask that you continue to replenish our water sources as you see fit lord We thank you for your many, many blessings. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And it is good to have you in the house of the Lord this morning. I, I pray that you are plugged into Christ. I pray that uh, you'll go out these doors and pour into somebody's life. And I just wanted to say it's just a blessing to present Tucker Rickelson this morning. Tucker, you come this morning. And Tucker says, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. Stand right up here, buddy. And now he's following that profession of faith in believer's baptism. So Tucker comes for baptism this morning. Can somebody raise a hand and say Amen. Does anybody want to come stand by Tucker and say, you'll never stand alone at Calvary Baptist Church. And so we're going to see a baptism when John gets back, and we're going to be blessed as Tucker grows up in Calvary, that he knows he is never alone. And before you go out those doors, you come by and you shake his hand, and he loves to get his cheek pinched. He's got a fluffy face. And so just to let him know he's love. Rob? Hey, man, let's stand and grab my hand. We believe. 